Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. Today I'm going to be showing you how to find this, this integral here, the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over the square root of x dx. And this is going to be solved using one of the formulas on my Calc 2 study guide. So there's a link down in the description if you want to check that out. It's available for instant download, so you can go grab that today and start using it on your homework and studying. It should make your life a lot easier. But today I'm going to be showing you how to use one of the formulas on that study guide. So specifically the formula that we're going to be talking about is the one that says that if we're trying to integrate a function which is continuous between these two numbers but not at one of our endpoints that we're integrating over, it tells us how to deal with that integral. So basically it says if our function that we're integrating, so 1 over the square root of x, is continuous on the interval from, in this case, 0 to 1, and notice one of our endpoints is included and one is not. So it is continuous at one, but this function is not continuous at x equals zero. Because if you think about this function right here, if you plug in zero for x, you're gonna be getting one over zero, which is undefined, you can't do that. So as a result, this function is continuous from zero to one, not including zero, but including one. And basically what this formula tells us is if we know that this is the case, we can rewrite this integral as the limit as t goes to our endpoint where this is not continuous. So as t goes to 0, and we're going to be going to 0 from the right side because this function is defined for x's that are greater than 0 and also the interval that we're actually integrating over is for x's above zero. So we only care about the right-sided limit because these values to the right of x equals zero are actually included in our integral. So those are the ones that we actually care about. And what we're gonna be able to do is take the limit as t goes to zero from the right and integrate this same integral, but we're changing our lower bound to t instead of having our lower bound be zero. And then we're gonna integrate up to an upper bound of one and then we're gonna keep our function that we're integrating the same. So we had to do this because it doesn't really make sense to integrate a function where that function is not continuous or where it's not even defined, basically. So as a result, what we have to do is instead integrate from some, some dummy variable that we're introducing, t up to one, and then think about the limit as your lower bound approaches the bound that we actually had you know, from the side where, where we're actually integrating. So in this case, since it's our lower bound, we're gonna take the right-sided limit. If this were our upper bound that we had to do this with, we would take the left-sided limit. And that formula is also on my study guide. So now this is the new integral and limit that we wanna solve. And as long as we get some defined number for this, we can say that this is equivalent to the integral we started with. So now what we can do is think about just this integral here. How would we integrate 1 over the square root of x dx? And to do that, what we actually want to do is rewrite this as x to the negative 1 half. Because we know that x to the negative 1 half is equivalent to 1 over the square root of x, but this is going to be a little bit easier to integrate. We know they're equivalent because taking something to the one half power is the same as taking the square root of it. And by making the power negative, we can move it up from the denominator up out of the denominator so that it's not a fraction anymore. And the reason we want to rewrite it like this is because now we can use the power rule to integrate this. So the power rule says, in order to integrate this function, all we have to do is raise our power by one and then divide by the new power. So we're gonna keep our limit as t goes to zero from the right. And now we're gonna go ahead and integrate this. So increasing our power by one, we're gonna get negative one half plus one. Negative one half plus one is the same as negative one half plus two halves, which is a positive one half. So we're gonna get x to the positive one half. And then we're gonna divide this by one half. Well, dividing by one half is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of one half, which is two. So instead of dividing by one half, we can actually multiply this by two. So we're gonna get two x to the one half. And then don't forget that we have to evaluate over our bounds, which were t and one. 
So to evaluate over these bounds, we just have to plug in our upper bound, plug in our lower bound, and take the difference. So we're still going to have our limit as t goes to 0 from the right. And then we're going to plug in our upper bound. So plugging in 1 is going to give us 2 times 1 to the 1 half. Taking something to the 1 half power is the same as doing the square root of that thing. So we could also think of this as limit as t goes to 0 from the right of 2 times the square root of x from t to 1. So plugging in 1 gives us the square root of 1 times 2, which is 2. And then plugging in t is just going to give us 2 times the square root of t. Okay. So now we just want to figure out what this limit is going to be. As t goes to 0 from the right, what does this approach? Well, the square root of t is, or 2 times the square root of t, is continuous for all t values 0 or more. So if we're looking at the right-sided limit as t goes to 0 from the right, the square root of t is continuous for all these t values that we're actually looking at, for all t values close to 0 but greater than 0 because we're only looking at the right-sided limit. So as a result, to evaluate this limit, since it's continuous from the right, we can basically just plug in 0 for t, and that would give us 2 minus 2 times 0, which is 0, so it just gives us 2. So that tells us that this original integral we started with using this formula on my study guide is 2. So like I said, my study guide is a, should be a huge help to you as you study for tests or work through homework in an integral calculus class. There's a link down in the description. I definitely recommend checking that out. You can go get it right away and start using it today. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks and see you next time.